Hey guys, welcome to another explanation video, this time for the classic video game Pong. For any of you who are not aware of what this game is, this is played by either two players or a player and an AI who control a paddle, one on the left side and one on the right side. And a ball bounces back and forth between the two, when it passes by, the other that person gets a point. Um, I don't have any of the, the point scoring in place, but the actual functionality of the game has been implemented. Um, very simply, this button basically triggers the start of the game, and then we have the paddle controls on either side, where you press the up button to move your paddle up. When you're in the highest position, obviously nothing happens. And then when you press the lower buttons, obviously it moves down one. Now, there are three main sections to this game. Um, you have the paddle controls, each has one section, and then you have this center board, which is basically displayed by all of these mess of generators you see back here. So let's start with the paddles just to, uh, to get a brief understanding of how we're going to be handling this controlling movement. So each of the paddles were three of the work lights wide, I guess. So I would try to say three units wide. We'll just stick with units for the sake of making things easier. Um, and you can see that those three generators are on to represent the position. Now, because I have six generators total, there are four different positions that the paddle can be in. It can be these three, it can be these three, these three, or these ones. Now, because of this, if you have seen my risk video or any of the other explanations I've made on how these are supposed to function, um, I do all of this, or at least most of this, based on the amount of power that's being created. So if each of these three generators were on, the power being sent through these auto arms would be sufficient to make it through these initial ones, but not quite enough to make it through this auto arm. And then when you press the, uh, the button over there, depending on which one you press up or down, this auto arm would, would rise, which would trigger a power difference, which would then cause this to co go back to its previous state, but then it would shift the generators around. And I do this for basically every single one of these. Um, so this one only needs two auto arms just because the threshold isn't nearly significant and because we have all three generators powered We can see an example of the operation. We have 1.88 units coming through. We dissipate the two of them We dissipate two units on these guys. This provides 0.5. So this brings us to roughly like 2.3 something and Then we have a little bit of power coming through but it's not enough to make it through this auto arm and in this case if you were to press the up button what would happen is this would drop power would then flow through and we would re-trigger this auto arm to bring it back up because if we come back to this position we don't want this auto arm staying down and then triggering power we want this auto arm to come back up and dissipate the power to prevent this from triggering but then what we do is because we press the up button we would turn off the lower position and then turn on one higher so this is how the shift is essentially handled and we can we can see this as an example if we were to drop this it triggers the turns off this one and then turns on this one. So you can now see rather than having these three generators on, we now have these three generators on because we press our up button to move the paddle upwards one. And now if we were to look at this one, these have, a, have their own power thresholds, 1.88 plus the 0.5 doesn't quite get enough and, and so forth. That's the general premise that we have for making all of these power options work. And then of course the button depending triggers a certain auto arm and causes operations to happen. Um, the reason that this doesn't cause anything to go wrong when these generators are not engaged is because triggering an arm when it isn't in its down state at the moment does nothing. Um, I have thought about a change where if something is off and you, you can still toggle it um, into the on state even if it is not receiving power, but currently that is not a feature of Astroneer. So even if this gets toggled because it doesn't receive any power, that, that change is essentially not registered, which is something that is very important to make note of if you're trying to do any complex circuitry like this. Um, that's pretty much the basic premise of the paddle functions. The paddle was, this left paddle at least, was actually the first thing that I had working. Um, it really didn't take that long. It was uh, relatively simple to kind of just think through and handle the operation of it. The right paddle, on the other hand, um, I originally started to duplicate every, exactly what I did on the other side, but for some reason, it was not working. So I opted to take a little bit of a suggestion from, I believe it was one of my Twitch follower viewers, um, I Jake says, he mentioned that I could probably just have buttons tied to each of the three positions. So this first button handles the lowest position, second one handles the second third, 
third one handles the upper third, and then the last one handles all the way up at the top. And if we trigger these buttons um, with a power gained or power lost, what this will allow us to do is if we switch power to a different, say, sensor, it would trigger that those three generators to turn them off, and then it would trigger the next one to turn the three generators on. Um, so this would also work out totally fine. And then these are just the remains of my previous attempt. But this is what's done here. This is definitely a lot simpler, just because it's a, it's a different method of handling it, and honestly, it's a lot a lot easier to basically follow through. So this generator is always on because we always want power coming through. And these guys basically handle where the power is at the current moment. So because these are up, we don't have the paddle in any of these positions. But the paddle, this is down here, so the paddle is in the highest position it can possibly be in, which means that each of these are receiving power. These guys down here all handle the direction movement. So this upper one handles moving the paddle up, and this one handles moving the paddle down. So if we were to, say, toggle this one, we'd now have power come through the downward sensor of the top four position. So we would turn this back on to signify that our, our paddle is moving off of the upper position, and it is moving to one down, because we gotta turn that auto arm off, and power is gonna then come through here. And what that'll do is then this will allow these two to be primed for, uh, for toggling with the button and such. Um, but these sensors right here, are, as I said, these are power lost or power gain, and these are tied to the generators that handle the paddle position. So if one of these were to receive power, we would turn it on. If they would lose power, we would turn them off. And that's exactly what happens here. If we were to then toggle this guy, what would happen is this would receive power. It would swap both these arms. And it would also, it would also re-toggle this one because we need to make sure, as I said previously with the other paddle, we need to make these auto arms come back up before they exactly cancel. Um, so this one would come back up so we'd no longer have power, so we'd lose our upper position. But then this one would come on and we'd gain the one down position. So if we were to just drop it real quick, there was a brief flash where this flipped back up again, which means that we know it cam came on. And now we switch down to one more position lower. And if we go and look just very briefly at our generators, we see that this one is no longer on and these three are on. So we moved our paddle effectively down one. In either case, these generators, what they do is they are also hooked up to a power sensor to connect to these generators. So this entire mess, it's the same thing repeated exactly as many times as we have spaces for the ball. You can imagine these as basically representing each of like the pixels, so to speak, each of the units. So when a generator is on, that is where the ball is. Um, so you can imagine that just being like, if I were to flip this generator on, this is where our ball is. And we can see that that's where our ball is at the moment. Um, the, the, the difficult thing to kind of like actually look at because it is a little bit crowded is we have something branching off to the upper left, to the upper right, to the lower right and the lower left. And what all of these circuitry does around it is these handle which direction the ball is supposed to move in. So this is kind of done in more of a cascading method. So depending on where the ball came from the last time depends on where the ball is gonna go to next. So in this case, if we take a look at the upper right, when this generator comes on, you see that each of these auto arms come on. So right now we don't have any power flowing to that sensor, that sensor, that sensor, that sensor. But what can change that is these extra small little generators right here. If we were to turn one of these small generators on, this provides enough power to overcome the auto arm and then trigger the sensor. So these generators are what I've come to call the direction indicators. So right now we don't have any direction indicator on. So when this generator is on, the ball doesn't go anywhere because it doesn't know what direction to move in. But if we were to flip this, this would trigger this power sensor. So this power sensor, what it does is it reads what we've done and it figures out where we want to move the ball. Um, just for the sake of having to create like an expansion slot, I, it's probably best if I look to the left a little bit. So if we were to trigger this generator, excuse me, this would tell the ball that we want to move in the upper left direction. So what this does is this toggles this generator to turn it off to basically erase where the ball was previously. It turns this generator off because we need to cancel the direction we just came from and it turns on the upper left generator right here. So we move our ball one position up and to the left. And then we also turn on this generator as well because we moved to the upper left, but we still want that ball to continue in the same direction. So we continue on with the upper left direction all the way until we reach either a corner or an upper wall position. 
So the corners are very, very easy because the corners, if you get the ball into the corner moving diagonally, there's only one place it can go. It can basically only go back in the direction it came from. So this one right here sends the ball in the upper left direction to the corner, but then the corner sends it basically right back. It's not terribly complicated for those guys. But say we were going to the upper right. This would obviously cancel the position of the ball and its previous direction, and then also send it to the next location to the upper right and turn on the right direction. Except this time, the right direction, because we're at the top position that the ball can be, it doesn't keep going to the upper right. In this case, it switches to the lower right, because imagine if you have a ball moving to the right and upward, it hits a wall, it's still moving to the right, but now it's moving downwards. So that would turn on this little section right here and continue our downward movement until we hit something. Um, the, the way that we handle the collisions on the sides is right here, we don't have this generator on, meaning our paddle is not here. So this power sensor on power gained or lost turns on one of these generators. So as I mentioned with our direction generators, when the generator is on, that allows the ball to move in that direction. And if you actually have multiple generators on, the ball can move in multiple directions so it can split, which is an issue that I have experienced quite, quite a few times. Um, so we need to make sure that only one of those generators is on. Um, but this paddle turns on this generator because in this case, we're not gonna, we don't care what direction the ball is gonna move in because there's only a certain location it can go to if we're in a corner. So this generator, to allow us to overcome the auto arm power requirements, is coming from the paddle. So if the paddle is in that position, then we allow the ball to bounce by triggering the power sensor. If the paddle is not in this position, the generator is off and the ball doesn't move anywhere. Then if we were to go to one down, because we now have the capability of if we bounce from the lower left to the upper right, or if we come from the upper right and bounce to the lower right, um, we, how, we now have a double set of generators. One generator is turned on by the paddle. So if the paddle is in that position, we have one of these generators turned on. The other generator, once again, comes from the direction. So the corner is the only unique case, but the every single other paddle position needs two generators. Um, so this time we also need two auto arms because both of these auto arms are going to turn on, but we need to make sure that we can overcome both auto arms by having both conditions met. And this is just a, a fancy way to essentially figure out, do we have the paddle and which direction should we go in? So we only move in a certain direction. This one would in this case be the upper right direction. In this case would be the lower right direction based on which generators are turned on or not. And then this up here, this up here is basically kind of supposed to split in between here. Um, when I originally created my board, I only had a singular uh, one of these figurine platforms. So I originally had the orig top row as um, essentially blocked off. This would not be used by the ball whatsoever. But that being said, if the ball was bouncing on a six by a six by six grid, it would basically just repeat the same pattern every single time. And that would be pretty boring to play. So unfortunately, I had to modify that so that it wasn't going to uh, wasn't going to happen. So in order to do that, I had to squeeze in an extra row. So that's what you see up there. That that row right there is just squeezed in between here. So these guys go to there, and then from there they go to here, on the right. And then this is the, an exact copy of the far left side where the paddle basically turns on one of these generators, and then the other one for everything aside from a corner is based on the uh, based on the position of where the ball. Is coming from. So when we start the game, we press this button as I have mentioned. What this does is this starts the ball at a predetermined location and a predetermined direction. So I want to say it starts it right at this position right here and it moves in the upper right direction. So if we would just want to kind of get a little bit of a, a taste of what happens here, we can move the paddle upward one bit and the ball would bounce off there, it would come down, it would bounce off here. We gotta move this down one. There we go. It'll bounce off here, it'll come down, bounce off here. It'll move and then it'll bounce off here. And then it'll go bounce right here, right? That's how the bouncing works. Okay, so when we uh, when we start this, we'll uh, click the center button to get the ball going, and then we'll move this this platform all the way down to the right, just so you guys can get an example of what happens.
And then in this case, you see that we didn't get to the ball. So as I said, one of the generators is not turned on. So we can go take a look at the corner case right here, where because we don't have the actual paddle in the upward position, we never triggered this generator. So this arm is eating up all of the power supplied. So we don't actually end up triggering the power sensor to move our ball again. So as a continuation of this, let's go and move this paddle upwards and continue the ball movement. So now that we're there, the ball moves again. So as I said, it, this doesn't really take into account any of the scoring mechanisms. Uh-oh, got a little bit of a glitch right there. That's okay. Um, but let's go take a look at this case this time. So this time the ball is in this position right here. And we have this generator turned on and this one not turned on. This is because the ball just came from right here. It came in the upper right direction, which actually comes from those guys up there. And that actually turned on this generator. So we know that if we had our paddle in this location, we would turn on these other back two generators. This would not be on, so we would not have enough to cover the two, the threshold of the two auto arms. So this would not end up triggering. But because we have this one on from the direction, this would overcome these auto arms and it would power this power sensor, which would then move the ball because it came from the bottom, uh, the bottom left, it would move it to the upper left direction. So once again, if we were to bring our paddle up, because this ball came from here, if our paddle was now moved to here, it would continue in the upper left direction. Um, so as I said, sometimes we do get a couple of these glitches where the ball ends up splitting. Um, this can be a little bit annoying. Sometimes this has to do with some of these generators not turning off appropriately. So if any of these direction generators like this one, this one should have turned off due to the way that the, uh, the ball moves. Because this one stayed on, if we come to this position again from a different direction, it will cause the ball to split because it'll think, oh, we can move in this direction as well as the new direction that we just came to. So for, for sake of keeping this consistent, we can turn some of these generators off. And this one actually is not controlled. This is controlled by that direction, so we can turn that one off too. Um, so it, it can be a little bit finicky still, but the, the main operation of this Pong game does work properly. Um, as you can see from the clip that I did post on Twitter. Um, but yeah, generally that's the uh, the full explanation for how this Pong video works. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Um, attached to this video, I will also provide the world save file. So if you are interested in playing this, you can certainly download it yourself, grab a friend and hop on in. What you can also do is you can also turn all of these generators on manually. So if we just click all of these guys, and try not to fiddle with any of the buttons if you turn this entire wall on, just because in that if you do that, it'll uh, it'll kind of turn some on and off and it'll get a little bit of a weird behavior. And we can play with the computer in this case. We can just play with a complete wall. The generator will read as having triggered and we got a lot of erratic behavior there. It's kind of funny when it happens. I believe one of my other viewers mentioned it kind of looks like one of those futuristic space computers with all of the lights just turning on and off. Um, but you can certainly turn all of these on and just kind of play around with it sporadically. But as I was saying, let me just get away from some of the noise so you can hear me a little bit more clearly. Um, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you do have any questions, once again, just please drop them in. I will certainly be keeping an eye on it and will be more than happy to answer them. The world save file will be for available for you to download. Um, you can see in the top left, I do have my Twitter handle and my Twitch up there. I do primarily stream on Twitch and I cannot reiterate this enough. I do not post a lot on YouTube. I just do quick videos for these explanations and things because let's be honest, this is at this point 19 minutes long and this is a little bit too long to post on Twitter. So feel free to subscribe if you like. I will not be producing uh, super a, a lot of content for this YouTube, but Primarily, I do stream on Twitch, and I have been streaming quite a lot on there. So the best way to support and get up-to-date information would be to follow Twitter, keep an eye out. If I go live on Twitch, drop in, say hi. But for now, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions or even any other ideas that you would like to discuss, please, by all means, let me know. I'm active in the Discord. You can certainly find me there. I hope you guys enjoyed the video.